I have always been a solo traveler. Me, my bike and always thousands of unknown miles ahead of me. Don't get me wrong, being a solo traveler doesn't mean to be alone all of the time. You meet people along the way. With some you might share some hours, with some you might share some days or even weeks. But a wise woman I met on the road once said that we meet people, we tag along with someone for some time, but in the end we're all traveling alone. And this is what I did for the last two years. I traveled by myself. I took care of myself, I took care of my own needs and I formed my own habits and routines. But when I set off to Albania, this style of traveling changed. I arrived in Albania as a solo traveling woman and I set off as being part of a crew. In Albania, I met Micha and Chris. And in just a few days, I knew that my solo travel days were over. We decided to become a group of adventurers with a common goal, traveling together to Istanbul. Our plan was to cycle 1,500 kilometers across three countries as a team. As we made our way through Albania, we got to know each other better. During breaks and while sitting around our tents, we would share our stories and learn more about one another. Chris had always been an adventurer. Funny anecdotes, touching moments, hopeful stories and lessons from disappointments. He had seen the world already and couldn't wait to explore it once more by bike. He's a delightful person, always up for a joke and he's one of those guys who knows what to say when things don't go as planned. He knows how to turn each situation into a good one. Chris and Micha planned this trip for a very long time. They prepared for a journey which should lead them far away from home. One and a half years. That's how long their journey is supposed to take. One and a half years towards unknown land. And when I met them, they had already cycled together for the past two months. Micha has a unique gift. He's not only exploring the world by bike, he deeply observes the surroundings through all his senses. He finds peace in the little details. He wouldn't miss the butterfly sitting on his panniers as I do. He wouldn't rush through breathtaking landscapes. He really has an eye for the small things. And so we cycled as a crew. We cycled and we camped, we ate and we slept. And whenever we had the chance, we were talking about going far going far and further and about that one day when we might arrive in Istanbul. We were speculating about our time and future, <laughs> about how far we might go together, maybe very far, maybe as far as none of us had ever been. I used to travel alone, but now we were three. I have to introduce this adventurous guy as well. Timo, the ultimate route planner and strong cycling maniac joined us, making us a group of four. So here we go, this is us, four individuals with the plan to go far. A crew that decided to stick together for the upcoming 1,500 kilometers to Istanbul. We're starting into our day as a group of four. Uh, it's gonna be an experiment in a group of four. Everything is different, so yeah, we're starting into a new adventure. Uh, we are now we're now in Flora and we're heading towards Greece. And yeah, today it's uh, 60 kilometers and 1,400 meters of elevation. So there's a massive mountain ahead and yeah let's just see let's just see how it goes uh let's see where the journey will take us and yeah let the <laughs> let the adventure begin we come gleich so a plateau nochmal zwei drei zwei, drei Kilometer und dann, dann geht's richtig ab, ey. Dann, 
Ja, man muss drüber. Oh Gott. Schon ein bisschen anstrengend. Ja. Ja, das ist halt ganz gleich noch. Uh. Guck schwer, in der Sonne wird es einem fast zu warm. Im Schatten, oh, im Schatten fast zu kalt. So, On that day we conquered the mountain, only to race back down. It was a challenging journey and to be honest, I felt tempted to spend the night near the pass road instead of going further down to the beach, since there was no need to go all the way down. However, it was no longer just about me. I was now part of a group, so I pushed aside all my exhaustion, swallowed my grumpiness and followed my companions downhill. Rädchen rostet schon. Ist halt eigentlich auch nicht dafür gedacht, wenn man ne, ein sentimentales Brettchen. This is our daily routine. We begin by preparing ourselves in the morning, packing up our belongings and setting off on our bikes. Throughout the day, we're constantly on the lookout for water sources as well as searching for grocery stores or places to eat. What's it to eat? I've never had a and just like that, we transformed from strangers to friends. It's truly surprising how swiftly strangers can evolve into friends while being on the road, just by sharing moments and memories and miles. <laughs> Every day followed the same routine. Eat, sleep and repeat was our slogan, but however, something seemed different this time. We could sense a change in the atmosphere and our usually giggly and funny friend Chris had become unusually quiet. He exuded a sense of calmness and introspection. And then... Chris broke his silence and made a decision, and his decision was certain. He said that it was time for him to return home. He made up his mind and wouldn't continue on the current path. He longed to go back home and expressed his desire to take a ferry from Igumenica in Greece. We accepted his decision, understanding the importance of respecting someone's choice once they've made it. We're Okay, we're in Greece. Uh, just had to show our passports twice. Time to learn some Greek words. 
<laughs> and let's go. Change was in the air. We reorganized ourselves as a group of three. Our destination remained unchanged, Istanbul, still 1,000 kilometers away. Ah, how much? 200 meters. Okay. 400 gehen dann noch weg. Okay. 250 haben wir seit dem Frühstück gemacht. Jetzt erst? Nee. Ach so, seit dem Frühstück. Okay, ja, ja, ja. <laughs> yes, it's hot. Uh, we're both uh, sweating like pigs. Uh, we're waiting now for Micha. He must be somewhere down the road, uh, not far from us. But it's hot like hell, <laughs> seriously. Uh, and it's just like uh, the beginning of June, so... I whew, I don't know how to cycle when it's like mid-August or something because we're already dying. Uh, yeah, maybe one more hour of cycling or one and a half. Huh? One and a half. One and a half, okay. <laughs> and then uh, we'll reach today's destination and hopefully uh, we'll get the chance to wash all the sweat off our bodies. They're reaching the top and it's always like uh, all the struggles and all the sweat just pays off when you reach the mountain top. It's wonderful up here. Like, uh, I know I say that quite often but <laughs> it's just what it is. Like uh, these mountains, the landscape, the houses, the stones, the rocks, everything is just uh, yeah, wonderful. It's it's really beautiful. I mean, just <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Gotta stop. How awesome is that? This looks like in the movies. It is so freaking beautiful. Like it really is. And uh, <gasps> and there's Timo coming. Perfect. Perfecto. Perfecto. Welcome. <laughs> What's that? Huh? Yeah, it's the sound all the time in the woods. That's the reason. This? They're shooting at something. Yeah. Ah, yeah, bullets. Okay, wow. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Goes the hammer. Bye bye, back to Germany. For this. <laughs> if you show us any dirty underwear, I will edit the footage, so no worries. <laughs> this is in my mind, I'm just going to fall out of my mind. But wait, here, here, with rain, to the to the socks. Yeah, yeah. How many kilograms do you think? 12.5. You? Nine and a half. I say it's, uh, what did I say? Eight. Eight kilograms. Bye bye. Toodaloo. How much? And the winner is Timo with 9.15 kilograms. Micha is to register online and he has to write down all the items which are inside and then he has to go back to the post office and give it a second try. Pedal for pedal we continued, feeling the companionship. The road to Istanbul might be long but we were so excited to see what the journey had in store for us. But as with any group spending 24 hours together there comes a day when things become overwhelming. And this day didn't come suddenly, it gradually sneaked up on us. 
Uh, we just had a little discussion or conversation because uh, we uh, we reached Ioannina and Michi and I we uh, were quite hungry and yeah like our sugar level our sugar level was quite low and Timo just wanted to reach our destination for today but we were both like oh we can't cycle anymore, we need some sugar, we need some sugar, we need to eat something. So, yeah, uh, that was one of the situations uh, where it's hard sometimes to cycle within a group. You have to adapt to the other person's needs. And uh, when i talking for myself, I have to say that I can't think or do anything when I, when I turn into that sugar craving monster thing then i'm just out of order yeah and that's uh not that easy neither for me nor for the group we found ourselves swallowing disagreements sometimes holding back our thoughts to maintain a positive atmosphere and making compromises for the sake of the group some days the discussions and decision making seem never ending when to start cycling where to have lunch what's for dinner and who's responsible for what even deciding where to pitch the tent requires careful consideration to ensure everybody's fine with the spot. We must take breaks when someone needs one and wait until everyone is ready to go. The repetition started to wear on us and beneath the surface, frustration began to surface. So we just keep on cycling, I guess. We became grumpy and a shadow of bad mood looms over us. Yeah, Timo, I see that it's durchgängig is, but it's schwierig, sein 50 kilo Fahrrad da auf die andere Seite zu wuchten. Ja, aber sag mir doch nicht, was ich besser machen soll, wenn ich hier gerade fast abgestürzt bin. Personally, I found it challenging. When I'm alone, there's no one else to blame but myself. I'm exclusively responsible for my food, my breaks, my tent, and I can go wherever I please at my own pace. The mood reached its lowest point and we knew we had to talk. Yeah. Yeah. We had to express our feelings, the good ones and the bad ones, without starting a fight. We had to communicate openly. <laughs> Of course, we resolved to stick together and make it to Istanbul as a united group. We wanted to arrive together as a team. And then from there, from Istanbul, we agreed to reassess our plans and figure out how to proceed. Ready for Turkey? Yes, ready. Hello, Mita. Ready for Turkey? Uh-huh. <laughs> 25, 25 kilometers and then uh, we will reach the Turkish border. Ja, klar. Da hast du wieder 27 Eis reingeschraubt. <lacht> um, so, we stopped at a gas station just uh, 1,5 kilometers away from the border uh, because we want to celebrate the border crossing at least a little bit. To be honest, I don't know why, but I'm feeling quite emotional. Uh, it's a fizzy feeling. Yeah, I just uh, realized that I'm on the road now for two years, like almost two years. Now it's uh, time to leave Europe. It's a very nice feeling to feel so excited. Turkey, here we come. Nee, das C wie bei Cholo und dann OK. So. Sa. Was? 
Sa. Sa. Mhm. Sa. Aber warum noch das G? Ist das wie ein H hier? Nee, weil ja, wahrscheinlich einfach nur um ein Ding, um es mal zu dehnen. Güneş. Güneş. Ist das nicht auch oft ein Nachname von Türken? Ja. Güneş. Güneş. Ah, ich weiß noch ein Wort. Kai Kai. Kai Kai. Was ja. heißt es? Skateboard. Kaffee trinken Tee. Kaffee. Kaffee Tee. Gerne Kaffee. Tee. 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 Tee auch gut. Tee. Gut. Tee Schokolade. Und äh, du auch? Du auch Tee mit uns? Ja. Du. As we crossed the border, we stepped into a completely different world. And I can't put into words what we encountered there. You have to experience it yourself. The locals welcomed us with open arms, offering us food and sharing their thoughts and stories. Despite being foreigners, they treated us like we belonged, as if we were one of their own. I've never encountered such warm-hearted people in my entire life. And then we made it. Together we faced tough times and challenges, but what mattered most was that we arrived as a united group. We were proud of ourselves for making it this far. Although I've always been a solo traveler, and don't get me wrong, being a solo traveler doesn't mean that you're alone all the time. We meet people, we tag along with someone for some time, but in the end we're all traveling alone. Our paths might cross again, but as seekers, explorers and travelers, we now go individually. We decided to go solo once more embracing the freedom and excitement of exploring on our own pace and going far and further. <laughs>